MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Yeah. 
Precious God, indeed, you have given us your everything. And so now we gather here to worship and we ask ourselves to give our everything to you. Our everything to you in this time of worship. Our everything to you in this moment in time. So I ask blessings upon this gathering, upon those here, upon those who couldn't be here, on those who are watching us on the internet from around the world and even next door. I ask blessings upon blessings upon this time. In your precious and holy names I pray, amen and amen. Please be seated. Welcome to each and every one of you here this morning. I'm Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, Minister of Congregational Life, and a huge welcome to all of you who are gathered here this day. And if you are visiting with us for the first time, would you mind just raising your hand so we can acknowledge your presence and give you some information about us? Welcome. The brochure gives you more information about us, and the flower is to remind you that indeed God is blossoming in our hearts every moment of the day. Amen? Amen. And I also bring greetings to you from Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas, our senior pastor, who is enjoying his vacation in England right now. He actually, well, he misses us. Don't tell him we know. <laughs> and for those of you, tomorrow is his birthday, so while he will be out of the country, of course, he does receive email. He did not ask me to tell you that, but I'm telling you that. <laughs> you can send him your well wishes. He'll be back with us in uh, about a week and a half. So um, blessings to him on his journey and to all of us who are here. Well, we have a few announcements to make for you. Before we get to our slides of announcements, I want to let you know that I just got a call from Jane, um, our music director, who is out of town, and she wanted to let you know. She's out of town uh, with uh, Camille and others doing fundraisers for the Asian Pacific Islanders uh, project, and they have so far raised $1,300 in their endeavors. <laughs> And there is another church yet to go to tonight. Um, so, so, so please um, uh, send your wishes to them. I also, if you are new with us today or if you have just begun to visit with us in the last month or two, in two weeks there is a newcomer's reception that you are invited to. And we'll have more information about that next week. And now on to our uh, announcement slides. Um, Azania is our ministry to those of African descent, and it is meeting today <laughs> after service in the upper room. Um, and it was really great. There was a coffee this morning after our 9 o'clock for those who couldn't make, um, st who, who don't come to the 11 o'clock. And I thought that was very ingenious. Anybody else wants to organize that for their ministry, let us know. So please join in the upper room. I've already heard the menu. It sounds great. There is food attached to that meeting. Love it. It's no wonder that ministry is so large. <laughs> We like food here, guys, if you're not going to the Azania meeting and you would like to gather together, the men's spirituality group is stepping out for brunch at Palmer Palermo's, easy for me to say, Palermo's, uh, right there on Vermont. It is a uh, treat yourself uh, lunch, um, so please, uh, please be prepared to be responsible for your bill, um, but have a good time. Have a good time with one another there. Well, you know, don't you just hate it when you go to these things and somebody's like, well, I didn't know I had to pay. <laughs> and then the person who organized it sat there going, oh, my credit card's maxed out. <laughs> so if nothing else, go for a drink of water. <laughs> Or a cup of coffee. It's, gonna, it's a great time, I, and so please join the guys there. Wednesday nights, if I invite you, if you are in this area, you are near here on Wednesday nights, it is, it's a great night. Wednesday at 6.30, we have our prayer and meditation service in the style of Taze, and I guarantee you that if you have not experienced it, make a point to. If you have, continue to come back. It is, uh, it's, a, it's a great time of reflection and renewal. So that's at 6.30. 
At 7.30, our choir practices, our morning choirs practice, and then we have our Wednesday night Bible study, which, as you can see, we are in the middle of a series called Has Jesus Visited You Lately? Last week was in the upper room. This week is on the road and at the beach is the week after. (gasps) Isn't that tempting? Don't you want to know what's going on? (laughs) So come and visit us. It's really, a great, it's really a great time. If you can't make it in person, you can Skype in. We have faithful Skypers um, who have been a part of Bible study for uh, over a year. So if you are at home, it's not video Skyping, it's audio. So don't worry, you can be in your bathrobe and still join us. So um, just let me know about that and we'll get you hooked up with Skype. Well, you don't have to come here to the church to be in community. We have home groups all around the area, and there's two that I want to point out to you. The Covina Pomona one has started, and our Long Beach one is starting, Amy, our Long Beach one is starting in a couple weeks. Home groups meet twice a week, twice a, twice a week, (laughs) twice a month. You get tired of each other then, huh? Meet twice a month, and it's a really great time to fellowship and to study with people in your in your neighborhood, basically. So I invite you to see Scott Hill. Scott Hill's in the back. He'll be in the in the lobby. Then you can sign up for either of those or the other groups that we have going on. Just a few more announcements. Next Sunday is Earth Day. And there's a number of things that we're going to be doing. At 4.30, we're going to be having a gathering of gratitude. It's going to be a time of music, dance, ritual, and fun. If you are a musician that have, and you have a song that honors creation, let me know, and we'll make sure you can be a part of. If you just want to come and be a part of and sing and dance and be in gratitude, just come. It's going to be an adventure. 4.30 to 6. It's going to be a great time. You can see me, and I'll have more details for you. We are also going to have, how many of you um, do public transit? Ooh, yay. And how many of you don't? Yeah, here's your opportunity. (laughs) I love this. One of our members, Larry Rodriguez, has donated five tap cards. And yeah, mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm, $20 a piece on them. And uh, all you have to do, this is a free raffle. I'm looking for the card. Somebody got into my envelope. Okay, the card is here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, On here is $20, and all you do is you present this to the um, public transit of your choice that honors it, and, uh, and you're good to go. And, and so if you would like to challenge yourself to do public transit just a little bit more than you do now, there are, ra- there are forms to fill out at the information table, and we will pull these after sun- next Sunday. Um, so um, please, yeah, mm, please av- avail yourself of that. And we, there's more information. You're going to see a bright orange. Can't miss it, can you? Um, information that has all the information on here. And also, we're going to be having a table of environmentally friendly stuff. If you have any information you'd like us to share, please give us that, like uh, weatherizing your home, um, transit, all that type of stuff. Let me know, and we'll put that out, and, and much more. So, two more announcements. We are having a very special um, presentation two Sundays from now. It is on prostate cancer and erectile dysfunction, what a gay man should know. Um, this is this is an issue that I know for men in here is a very important and not spoken much about issue. Um, this is going to be presented by someone in the community who um, has is is uh, quite familiar with this issue, and he found that there's nothing there was very little out there for gay men because it affects gay men uh, differently than it does heterosexual men. And so, he is doing this presentation with a, a local doctor. Go to our website. <clears throat> And go to the Google Calendar. You're going to see a long, um, a lot of information about this event. So, guys, please put it on your calendar and invite your friends to come. We are co-sponsoring this event. We're hosting it and co-sponsoring it. Um, so, please attend. It's free. We like free. Um, and lastly, something else that's free is our fourth annual joint picnic with MCC in the Valley. It's going to be in a few weeks from now. 
There are flyers with directions, again, at the information table. Keith Minan, our info man, is very busy out there, um, but see him. He's got flyers and directions, and it's just a good time to fellowship and to be with one another. <sighs> Did you catch that? There will be a test on that after service. But your bulletin is your cheat sheets. Take those home. Read them. Go to our website. There's lots of stuff that's happening. We like to have this to be more than a Sunday church. So there's lots of opportunities to be in community. Avail yourself of them. And now, one of the best ways to avail yourself of community, turn to each other and welcome each other here this morning. Our scripture reading today comes from John, uh, chapter 20, verses 19 through 21, or 31, sorry. On the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together. They had locked the doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leadership. Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, may peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were very happy when they saw their teacher. Again, Jesus said, May peace be with you. My Abba has sent me. So now I am sending you. He then breathed on them. He said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Thomas was one of the twelve. He was called Didymus. He was not with the other disciples when Jesus came. So they told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, First, I must see the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe what you say. A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, May peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach, Reach out your hand. And put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe, Thomas said to him, my sovereign and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in front of his disciples, They are not written down in this book. But these are written down so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, child of God. If you believe this, you will have life because you belong to him. Hear what the Spirit says today.
how we love that name. When we speak it, we can feel the presence. Jesus. We can feel it in all parts of our being. And so I pray that as we are about to hear the word, that we allow ourselves to truly feel that presence, even in those times of doubt in our lives. So bless this word and bless all of us who are to hear it. May it indeed be yours, I ask and pray. Amen and amen. Well, this is one of those Sundays where the message, I, I always, as I, I've shared before, I always looked forward to the Sunday after Easter. I looked forward to it because it was one of the few Sundays as a kid that I could at least say to myself quietly, mm How come? Because I don't know if I was the only one, but when I was a kid growing up and it would come to the quote-unquote Doubting Thomas story, right? That bad guy. I mean, he was just like a notch under Judas, right? Hmm. Thomas, how dare you be like Thomas, the doubter. He doubted the existence. He doubted that Jesus had come to them. You know what? He was probably one of the most honest of the apostles. Amen. I credit that to our Wednesday night study group. Someone said that, and it was so true. It's so true, because think about it. A week earlier, 10 days earlier, Thomas, who was really, really close to Jesus, his teacher, his Messiah, his Savior, the one who had come who was supposed to indeed save the Jewish people, I mean, like really save the Jewish people, you know, to overthrow the Romans who were oppressing them, the one they put all of their hope into suffered an incredibly violent death, a horrific death, a humiliating death on the cross. And then his body put in a tomb, and then it disappeared. And they said it was resurrected, but was it? Thomas, think about it. Thomas didn't believe the, didn't believe the story a week earlier, if you think about it, because if he didn't believe it when they told him Jesus had been resurrected, that'd be kind of hard to capture, amen? I don't know about you, but I always prided myself, prided myself in being a little bit like Thomas. Prove it to me. But I'm telling you what, once it's proven to me, you can never take it away from me. Amen? In the darkest of times now in my life, you cannot take my faith away from me. Because once I open myself up to really receive it, nothing can take it away. Thomas, just another ordinary guy. And you know the cool thing about Jesus in this story is that Jesus unlike how I've heard some preachers teach it, it, is Jesus didn't, like, call him out on it. He didn't chastise him for doubting. He did say, oh, come on, believe. But he didn't say, mm-mm. He said, you believed because you saw me. And blessed are those who will believe who haven't seen me. Okay? He, 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 it, it wasn't a but in there. It was a, you've seen me because, you believe me because you've seen me. And blessed are those who will believe who haven't seen me. And, and Jesus went a step further because when he appeared through the door, that kind of whoosh through the locked door comes Jesus. What did he say? Peace be with you. Peace. He didn't say peace to all of you except you, Doubting Thomas. <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you. He came to comfort. He comforted. 
You know, Jesus was actually really busy after he resurrected and before he ascended in those 40 days because he came and comforted a lot of people. He comforted Mary when she was grieving at the tomb. She comforted the, he comforted the disciples as well as Thomas when they doubted and when they were filled with grief. He comforted the, the ones who were on the road to Emmaus who were still befuddled by it all. He comforted many when he rose from the dead and before he ascended. And he also challenged. Do you remember the Great Commission? Go forth and do as I have. Go forth and baptize in the name of the Holy Spirit. He did that after he rose from the dead as well. He he had at least 10 visitations, if not more. As Scripture says, there's many more that's not recorded. Honey, I don't know somebody more busy. Oh, yes, I do. Mothers. (laughs) Ha, ha. I had to throw that one in. Any of you saw me in the fellowship hall as I was trying to get ready with a four-year-old attached to my leg? (laughs) No rest. There was no rest for Jesus. He was busy before he died, and he was even busier after he came off that cross. And I would say he's still busy today. Amen? Because I don't know about y'all, but I think there's a lot of people in here who question. Who doubt. Amen? Who haven't decided whether or not to truly follow the call. I don't know about y'all, but you know, I've doubted. I've doubted. Is this for real? Is God real? Is this faith thing real? Amen? Amen? When I've been in the darkest of nights, St. John of the Cross, who was a uh, who, who in the 16th century mystic, he, he, had, he suffered for 45 years thinking that God wasn't real. Thank God he came to the realization that God was real by the time he died, so he found some peace, amen? But most spiritual leaders, most people of faith go through a period and sometimes a prolonged period of doubting. Is this really real? Is this really real? When we lose our jobs, where is God? When houses are foreclosed upon, where is God? When we wake up drunk again, where is God? When our body fails us, where is God? Any of us ever said these things? Where is God? It's at times like those where I just want to I just want to put out if there is anybody here or anybody listening who is in that place the main thing I ask you to do is cut yourself some slack because it's okay to doubt it's okay to question it's okay to wonder Because it is in our wonderment, it is in our questioning, it is in our doubting that God has the opportunity to reveal God's self even more deeply than ever before. Amen? I think everybody in here has doubted at one point in time at least the churches of your origin, unless, of course, you are lucky enough to be a child who grew up in in MCC. (laughs) Amen? Otherwise, I think everybody in here has probably doubted the church of their origin, which you probably believed at one point of time was the word of God. Amen? How many of us had preachers who, uh, who assured us that what they had to share was the word of God, and if you disagreed, if you doubted, amen? There's people in here, I bet, who were excommunicated because you questioned. Amen? But if it wasn't for the fact that you have, and I have had the ability to doubt, we wouldn't have had the ability to grow. Amen? If you had not allowed yourself to doubt, you would not have given yourself the ability to grow. I remember I was teaching years ago, and when I was in Albuquerque, I had um, presented some work on, uh, from Bishop Jack Spong. Awesome guy, by the way totally awesome. And I presented some of his work. And one of the leaders in my church there had a faith meltdown, complete 
faith meltdown and, and actually left the church for a while. And I'm like, and I'm like, what's going on, Patrick? And he said, why wasn't I taught this? Why wasn't I taught this as a youth? Why wasn't I taught that God was so embracing as a youth? And, and he had to really go into the depths of darkness to be able to grasp and to process and to come out the other side. But if it wasn't for his doubting, he wouldn't have grown in his faith. Now, I'm not saying everybody have a crisis of faith and go into darkness and leave the church. I would like to hope that you have the ability to stay in community in your times of doubt. (laughs) But, honey, if there was a place you could question, this is the place. Amen? We have permission to question. You know why I can say that with conviction? Because I know God is big enough for our doubts. God is big enough for our doubts. Even Jesus himself doubted. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Amen? Do you think God had forsaken Jesus when he suffered on the cross? I don't think so. But he felt it, didn't he? Even Jesus himself doubted. And honey, if Jesus himself could doubt, welcome to the club. You are in good company. Amen? We are in good company when we doubt. I like us to think about it as it is a, instead of just doubt as a bad thing, thinking of it as sacred doubt. Sacred doubt allows us to question and to go more deeply into our faith. I want to share with you some writings of someone This is going to be, you guess who, people from Bible study cannot answer. It was written, where is my faith? Even deep down, there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. If there be God, please forgive me. I have such deep longing for God, but it it is my longing is repulsed. I'm empty. I have no faith, no love, no zeal. And in writing to another, Jesus has a very special love for you. But as for me, the silence and the emptiness is so great that I look and do not see. I listen and do not hear. I speak the words of prayer and it's just mumbling. What do I labor for? If there be no God, there can be no soul. And if there be no soul, then Jesus, you also are not true? Do you know who wrote this? Mother Teresa. Someone that I think everyone in here would acknowledge was a woman of God who gave all of herself and more to be the presence of God to those in the most need. If a woman like that can be in such doubt, we have permission to do so as well. Now, does that mean, does that mean she didn't believe? Well, she questioned. Does that mean she wasn't as great as She was, well, okay, there's politics around her. I want you to put those aside. The work she did was profound. And it was probably that doubt was so deep in her because she saw the worst in humanity. But the one thing about her is she didn't give up. And she kept doing the work that she had been called to do 40 years prior. She continued to do the work that she had been called out to do by God himself. Jesus had come to her and she felt and she went forth and did the work ministering to the poorest of poor. And even in her doubt, she would not stop. She would not stop. And I would say that even in her doubt, She became God to those she met because in her presence, 
She ministered. She became the hands and the feet and the heart of Christ to the world and to those who came to her. She became an inspiration so that many others who followed would do that work as well. One of my teachers had gone to work with her for a time, and she came back and told the story that every morning they got up very early in the morning. And after morning prayers and eating four in the morning, she went to every one of the workers, and she held their face, and she looked them in the eye and said, I see Christ in you. I see see Christ in you. I see Christ in you. Somewhere in her, that light would not go out, even in the dark times. And if she couldn't feel it in herself, she saw it in those who worked beside her to do the work that Jesus had commissioned her and all of us to do. Where does that leave us today? There's a lot of doubt sometimes. You know, for me, I, I remember years ago, I had tried, I had tried to ha- had get pregnant for years, 10 years, given it up, given it up. And a couple years after, and I had arguments with God like nobody's business, dead serious. And I was like, when I, get, I, when I get to heaven, God, and I said this, and some of you heard me say this, when I get to God, we're duking it out because I have been your faithful servant. And this one prayer that I had prayed my whole life, I was being denied. Ooh, I had some duking it out doubt times. Giving it up. And then a friend came to me who said, hmm, and allowed herself to be the hands and feet and heart of Christ to me and to my partner. See, she had had three embryos. Two were six months pregnant in her tummy. She had one more on ice, a la Maya. For those of you who know the rest of the story, because I was here when all of this took place, I had also been accepted as the senior pastor at Sydney, Australia. I was waiting for the visa process. And this offer came to me while I was waiting for the visa process. And I'm like, oh, this is the worst trick that God has ever played on me. (laughs) There was a lot of doubt. (laughs) God couldn't be a trickster like that. And then when I was in prayer, this is the best way I can describe it, and some of you have heard this before. I, got, I felt like God took me by the scruff of the neck and went, what have you been praying to? You know, God gets tired of our prayers sometimes. What have you been praying for? And look what am I offering you? And I'm like, okay, what's it going to be? Just more time in therapy if I don't get pregnant. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. (laughs) What the heck? (laughs) See, I I had doubted God. I I doubted God. I I, I was like I'd given up in some areas of my life. And there was a period that I was doing what I was doing because I knew I was supposed to do it. But not because I believed completely and fully. But you know what? I think if we wait long enough, at least I thank goodness I didn't have to wait 45 years like St. John of the Cross. (laughs) But God said, faithful servant, here. See, sometimes the answers to our doubts come in different ways. Sometimes they come when we have given up all hope. But to quote somebody from our Bible study, Julie, who will go unnamed. (laughs) (laughs) This is very profound, and I want you to hear this. When I feel as if God is not present. I'm paraphrasing. When I feel that God is not present, I choose to believe that God is present. Did you hear that? 
when I feel as if God is not present, I choose to believe that God is present. Friends, we all have a choice. If you are in a place of doubt about something in your life today, if it has happened to you or if it will happen to you in the future and you feel as if you are alone in everything, you cannot feel the presence, you cannot feel that tangible presence of God, of creator, of Jesus, I want you to choose to believe. Choose to believe because I can guarantee you that there is some time in your life that you have felt, if not but a flicker of the presence, then the full-blown presence of the Holy Spirit. And if it happened once, it is real. And if it's never happened to you, turn to some fanatic like me or somebody else in this church who will remind you, amen? How many, actually, how many of you have felt as if you have experienced in one shape or form the presence of Christ in your life at one point in time? Okay? Keep them up. Friends, look around. If you ever doubt, if you are in a time of doubt in your life that God is real, I want you to check out one of these people who have their hands raised. And if somebody doesn't have their hand raised, they're just lying to you. They have too. So turn to some, put your hands down. This is why community matters. Because in those times of doubt, I want you to remember that somebody's hand was raised and you go to them and ask them, tell me the story when Jesus visited you. And when we hear those stories, may it give us the hope and the faith that peace can be with me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved creator, you who has never, never, never left us, even when we feel as if you've disowned us, we come to you and we ask that our minds and our hearts continue to be challenged and to be opened. We pray that we can allow you to grow in our understanding and that we can grow in our understanding of you. Allow us to feel your peace fully and completely. And in those times of doubt, may we take the opportunity to just stop, to be silent, and just to be. And when we can't hear you, let us at least get comfort from those in community. So bless these words. May they not go empty, but may they fill us to overflowing. I ask this in your precious and holy name. With Jesus, our brother, our Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
morning. Um, in our sermon today, we talked about um, doubt, doubt of Thomas. Um, and that story has always had special meaning to me because there have been many times in my life when I was doubting Audrey. Um, and what I doubted most was myself. I spent a lot of time in my life um, being forced to prove to myself that what I believed to be true was true. And there have been times when what I've proven instead that what I believed to be true was flat out wrong. Um, doubt equals questioning. Questioning, honest questioning leads to honest belief. And I honest believe, honestly believe that I am where I am now because here is where I'm supposed to be. I have no doubt that I am where I'm supposed to be. A few months ago, um, I started a radio show. And I started that show um, because of a promise that I made to someone who I loved dearly. Um, and it's been almost a year now since she died. And the primary reason I loved her was because she was the one person on this earth that I could always count on to never doubt that I could do something. She had more faith in me than I had in myself. She had more faith in me than everyone else in my life combined. And then she was gone. Before she died, she made me promise that, one of the, that some of the things that she had always um, talked about us doing that I would do. And I doubted even then that I'd be able to get them done because my rock, my source of faith in myself, was gone. And so several months later, an opportunity came along. And I took it because I could hear Cecily's voice in my head saying, this is your chance to do what you promised you would do. And I know you can do this. And still I doubted myself. Every day I got up and every time I went into the station, I doubted that I could pull it off. And every week somehow, by the grace of God, I did. I doubted it would last long. And three months is not a long time, but it seems like I've been doing this for years. Seems like this is the thing that I should have been doing all along. And I've experienced unimaginable personal growth, professional growth, simply because I stopped listening to my own doubts and let Cecily's voice of pure faith in me lead me forward. She told me one, day, one time, when you don't think something's going to happen, no matter how hard you try, just put your head down and power through it. And when you look up, it'll be done. And that's what I've been doing. January 28th was my first show. April 1st, my show expanded. It expanded to, from one hour to two hours. Now it's expanded from two hours to two hours twice a week. And I have worked. <laughs> I've worked harder than I've ever worked in my life. I swear to you, I get up in the morning, I sit down at the computer, and when I look up again, the sun's going down. But it, my show has just grown phenomenally. And a big part of that is because of Cecily. Every day, I thank God for her, even as every day I mourn her loss. Another big part of that has been Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles. See, when I came to MCC, I doubted. I doubted God. I thought, well, it'd just be another church, and the churches that I'd been in up until now, eh. You want proof? It's been 20 years. I stepped away for a little while, but I came back because 
it had been proven to me. And every day I step in this building, you all prove to me again that I am where I should be. And I thank God for you. I thank God for that. This is the call to offering. And I know I've gone on a little long, but I just, this particular sermon has meant so much to me. I sat down and I started writing little notes because I didn't want to forget what I wanted to say when I came up here. And uh, I've got all these notes scribbled all over the program and half of them I can't even read because I was trying to listen and write at the same time. (laughs) But Metropolitan Community Church and Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles specifically has kept me going at times when I just, had I had to do it on my own, no, it wouldn't have happened. Um, And I, I, I really don't have anything else to say other than that. This is the call to offering. Give as you are able and remember that there is someone, at least one person, that believes in you, even if you don't believe in yourself. Thank you. to you yes. for life, mm-hmm. giving thanks to you for salvation, mm-hmm. giving thanks to you for helping our unbelief, 
giving thanks to you for not giving up on us. Yes. But forever standing with hands open and gowns pulled back so that we might see the wounds of your grace and your mercy yes. that you had for each one of us. Thanks because you never gave up on us. You always allowed us to even come back in our unbelief and check you out. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Thank you for the times we didn't believe that we would get up off our sick beds. We wouldn't wake up the next day. Yes, God. But you touched us with your finger of life and said it's time to get up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the time that we've been out of work so long that we didn't think anybody would hire us and everything was a big mistake and then the telephone rang one day. Yes. And somebody gave us a job. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the time that we felt that justice could never be given to a culture, to a group, to a people. But you have proven over and over, even in the courtrooms, yes, God. that you'll be right there for us. Thank you for helping us in our unbelief. Yes, God. Even in our relationships hmm. right here, God. Relationships with, with our partners where that we felt we couldn't go on. And you showed us one more door that we had not opened and you made it possible for another five years, another 10 years. We thank you today. We thank you for this resurrection time. Yes, God. To help us to know that we get down, but we get up. Yes, God. We get up. Yes. We thank you, Jesus for being our savior, for being our friend, for being our doctors, for being our lawyer, for being our mother, for being our father, yes. for being our sister and our, and our brother, for being our yes, doctor, God. for being yes. our nurse, for being just being. Yes, God. Thank you. Yes, God. Thank you. Help us to continue to raise our hands and open our mouths yes. to the times that we've doubted you and, and you still came in and you wiped our tears away. Yes, God. Yes. You helped us, God. Yes. You never, never turned your back on us when we didn't believe in you. Yes. We thank you today. We thank you especially for this church. We've mm -hmm. got so many babies out there. Mm -hmm. We've got so many young people who are homeless. Mm -hmm. We've got them out there and they're hungry. Yes. We've got them out there and the soles on their shoes are, are very thin. They don't know where to turn. They know they didn't make themselves. But yet somebody has told them and they have a doubt in their hearts mm -hmm. that you don't want them, mm -hmm. that you've turned on them, mm -hmm. and that we don't want them. Mm -hmm. I stand here today and I pray, dear God, that you'd bring those babies to us. Show us how to reach them, how to touch them, how to help them. Yes. These are your children. These are your people. These are our sisters. These are our brothers. Wherever they might be, wherever they are hungering and thirsting for you, let us give them your truth. Help us to tell them, even though they may not want to hear us, help us to tell them that it's real. You are real. You are alive. Yes, God. Help us. Yes. Help us. Yes. In our unbelief, help us. Yes, God. In our doubts, mm -hmm. continue to show yourself over and over. Help us to see you. Your pierced hands. And, oh, my goodness. As the loving God that you are, 
This is my prayer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we wonder if we will see somebody again. And sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Followers didn't know if they were going, they didn't even ask the question if they were going to see Jesus again because they didn't know what was going to happen, but he did. And even with that heavy upon his heart, Jesus ministered. He took bread yes, he did. and he asked blessings upon it and he broke it and he shared it. Here, take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body that will be broken for you. That will be broken for you. Yes. And he took a cup from the table, and again he asked blessings upon it, and he passed it to all of those who were there. Here, take and drink of this cup. This is a cup new, new covenant, and to it is poured forth my blood, my life essence, all of who I am, so that all of you who drink of it might know that you have new life, that your sins are forgiven, that you have a second chance with Jesus. And only hours later, he himself would be presented with a cup that he battled whether or not to drink from. <laughs> Friends, don't battle upon whether or not to drink from this cup, a gift from God for each of us. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of bread and for the cup of salvation blood that was shed for us. We thank you that you loved us before we could even love ourselves and yes. you accepted us. We thank you for this particular church that has opened its doors to people who've had those same doors slammed in their faces. We thank you because we can come to your table mm -hmm. just as we are. Yes. Believing and receiving that you forgive us, that you love us, and that you accept us. Jesus prepared the table. Jesus is asking you to open your hearts and come. He's paid the price. But he's asking you to come and receive the gift. He paid it for you, for me, and for others, those who are not here. It's there for you. Accept it and receive it. It is in his name that we offer you the brokenness of his body, the shedding of his blood. Amen. Amen. Here at Metropolitan Community Church, as with all MCCs around the world, we share and we celebrate an open communion. Yes. Some of you sitting here doubted whether or not you could come back to the table. I want to assure you that everyone is welcome at this table Amen. today. Everyone. Mm -hmm. The ushers will guide us in a few moments to stations located around the sanctuary. And our servers will take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself. And then we offer a brief blessing with you. If you would like one or the other, the blessing or the elements, let us know so we can serve you best. And if you would like to partake of communion just between you and your creator with no human intercessor, 
there will be a station of consecrated elements to your right in the alcove to which you might go at any time during communion. But it's okay to doubt, but don't let your doubts stop you. <laughs> Just don't let them stop you. Let's keep this feast one with the other, and whether yes. we come forward or not, this is a time of communing, uh -huh. of being one with the God who loves you most. May the servers and acolytes please join.
it. No, do it again. Do it again. Yes. I, I, I want us to sing this. I want us to sing this, and I want us to feel this, and I want to make this for us right now our prayer when we go out from here. Yes. Amen? Yes. I have decided. Yes. I'm sorry, I just trumped him. Uh -huh. <laughs> direction, even when we can't be walking in the right direction. Amen? <laughs> Just sit our butts down and keep facing the right direction. <sighs> have we at church today? All right, now let's go out and have some more. And before I forget, I get all carried away here. If some of these lilies were from you that you gave to the church in memory or in celebration of someone, please make sure that you take it home and beautify your home. Just make sure it looks tidy after you took yours out. Amen? Amen. <laughs> the last thing I leave with you is this. Again, a wisdom from our, if not mine, it's shared through our, I want 50 people on Wednesday night. Wednesday night it was shared. If it's not a blessing, it's a lesson. Let's keep it with us. Go into the week. Let's stay standing.
Indeed, I am grateful that we all joined together in community this morning for a time of worship. And I ask that as we leave from here, we accept the blessing that Jesus offered over and over. Peace be with you. Let us take that peace and bring it into the world, for indeed, the world needs a little bit more of it. May we go in peace with Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 